gentlemen, welcome to Rebels in Flux. My name is Chris Neto. I am your host. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we got a special, special, special guest, a gentleman that I've known for a while. And if you guys have not met Mr. Silverstein, you will today. Mr. Dave Silverstein, now of D10. How are you, sir? I'm great. Hi, everybody. Dave, can we start off by, uh, you know, I, I surprise people with now of. Give us a little... Uh, Give us your title and who you work for now and what you're doing over at D10. Sure. Uh, so I've taken on the role of the head of sales enablement for D10, uh, which basically in a condensed world means, you know, organizing the sales team and getting them everything they need so they can go out and be effective. I love these fancy titles. At least you don't yeah. have in your name. That, <laughs> sure that you would have lost points on our game show that we will run later for having Ninja in your title. So you actually gain points for that one. So thank you for very much for joining us. Dave, you've been in the industry for a while. You, this is not your first rodeo here. You, you, you're, you're, you're a seasoned vet. You know what's going on in the world of AV, right? And you're working now for a collaboration company. Well, let's start off with an easy question. What is collaboration now in AV, as in, in the AV industry, not specifically at D10, but what is collaboration in AV to you? So the interesting part is collaboration, which is certainly different than conferencing, is the ability to, you know, brings in the ability to share content uh, and even brings in that concept of whiteboarding. Uh, if you've ever been in, you know, meetings where it's tons of spreadsheets and people are saying, okay, go look at line B over to 722 and take this number and subtract it. The ability to, you know, whether it's on your desktop, grab your mouse, circle it and point to it, or whether it's in the conference room, just touch the screen and highlight what it is. You know, if I go back, I guess I've been here too long. I can remember the guy with the, with the laser pointer trying to spin it around and show what they're trying to point out on the screen as they do these things. Uh, but really the ability when you get into true collaboration, uh, when the marketing department is working on new graphics and you've got six or seven people on the team and they all want to be adjusting things and changing things at the same time, or the accounting department is updating spreadsheets all at once. It makes everybody so much more efficient when they can collaborate like that. And that's really where all these software collaboration tools are coming from today. It's just about work efficiency. And we have to take that same efficiency and move it into the conference room. Are you pitting this in an AV versus an IT mindset with that, with the, with that statement? Uh, uh, I don't think it's AV or IT per se. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't believe there's an AV IT convergence. I don't think there ever will be. I think when industries get larger, certainly the IT industry is large. I think when the industry get in, when industries get larger, you end up with specialists. Look at the medical industry, right? There are all kinds of doctors that specialize in all kinds of different things. And I got news for you. I would never ask my plastic surgeon to do my heart surgery, and I would never let my heart surgeon do my plastic surgery. But if I look at the, if I look <laughs> at the IT world, mm -hmm. the AV people should not think that we're gonna converge or combine or anything. We should just think of ourselves as the plastic surgeons of IT. We're gonna make people look good. We're gonna make people sound good. We're gonna make those rooms operate at the best they should. That we, is the correct analogy I've heard. And we should not try to be something we're not. We should not try to be heart surgeons. We shouldn't be building people's networks. We shouldn't be building our own network to operate our stuff. There's a, there's a doctor that knows how to do that. Let them do that and we can be our specialists. Sir, I did not ask you here to come on the mic and within the, the first five minutes of the show, drop about a handful of microphones. My crowd is not used to something like Sorry. that. Sorry. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is silly talk, sir. You are going into crazyville with this company, <laughs> but I completely understand where you're coming from. The yep. special movement is, uh, I, I, I will agree with you that yes, they're, they're, we are specialists. And even within that, there are subdivisions of those specialties that sure, people should be looking to do. I don't think that we can continue to operate as an industry as the be everything of everything uh, or the be all things to everything, uh, which has been our, uh, our past. So, Correct. 
the conversations you're, you know, you're basically alluding to workflows and how people work as part of collaboration, not necessarily conferencing. Conferencing is a, is a, is a piece to that, but not necessarily necessary for collaboration. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the chicken or the egg question, uh, does, does it have to be, can it ever be oversimplified? right? The process of collaboration, because essentially that's what everybody's trying to do is simplify collaboration, but then you kind of lose something if, if, if your product that you're selling does not have all these features. Is it possible to be oversimplified when you look? So, so the, they, I don't think it's possible to be overly simplified. Yet at the same time, one of the things that kind of drew me to D10 is uh, D10 identified that you know, Zoom is, is definitely the leader in collaboration services these days. You wanna to talk to somebody, you get a Zoom account, and away you go, you do your thing, right? D10 very quickly identified that they need to take Zoom and put it in the room. So if we can make a Zoom room as simple as the Zoom client, we got something. And that's really the key, you know, with a, with a D10 product, it's a display. You walk in, you hang it on the wall, and it's got everything you need. It's got cameras, microphones, touch screens, whiteboards, and it's Zoom. So it works exactly the same way as somebody used their desktop Zoom client. Yeah. They can't get lost. They can't get confused. It, it, it's interesting. Uh, as, you're, as you're stating that, I'm thinking, you know, you guys are, are up against some big, big names in the industry, uh, not just AV, but IT that are in the collaboration and the whiteboard space, mm -hmm. right? behemoths at that you know and here you guys come in a company called d10 you know some people may be watching the show and going you know what i saw episode one and two and we met d10 uh through Juan. um what is the differentiator i mean granted you guys went out and got a good friend in zoom to come along and introduce yourselves to the space right mm -hmm. because zoom is kind of kind of up and coming and if not there already uh, I, I don't want to take anything away from the amount of work that they did, but if you would have told me that somebody was going to come in and disrupt some of the bigger boys in our business with a product as simple as Zoom was, I tell you, you know, make it happen. I'd love to see it happen. They did. And then you guys yeah. go out and run with these guys and bring them to the party or they bring you to the party. How are you guys differentiating yourselves amongst the land of these big? big so the, the, the first thing that we did, it's more than just, it's more than just a, a handshake with the Zoom guys. We, we collaborate and our engineering teams actually work together uh, on developing the product. So anything that we make is made in conjunction with Zoom, right? So we're 100% working with them. Uh, we're, Zoom, part of the Zoom requirements is, you know, they're best in breed in video quality, they're best in breed in audio quality. And we have to make sure that we're exactly the same thing. Otherwise, you know, Zoom is not going to accept us. Uh, so we work very hard and collaborate with the Zoom team. All our, all our uh, D10 boards actually report to the Zoom management software. Uh, so for an IT guy looking at all his users, he can also look at all his D10 rooms. And that's something where if you're just making a generic that, you know, tell me what collaboration software to plug in today and I'll make it for you type thing. You don't get that kind of relationship. You don't get that kind of access. So, and again, the goal is to make it as easy as possible. Uh, if you think about it, you know, let me kind of put it another way for the old school AV guys that are out there, you know, for years we went around and put in conference rooms and God, I did three gun projectors and all those kind of things. That was, you know, that was the business at the time. But there were always these other little rooms where people went and sat and nobody did anything in there. And all of a sudden, one day, we started turning around and there was always some kind of, I'll call it a polycom star phone, but there was some kind of uh, audio conferencing device sitting on the table. I don't know where it came from. None of, none of us AV guys kind of did. We didn't really care about it. The room was too small. They'd never afford anything. Well, D10 is kind of exactly the same type of thing today. We're priced right and positioned right so we can go into every one of those little rooms. It's as simple as hang it on the wall and you're done. It's even got a wireless connection. I can put it on a cart and they can roll it from place to place. 
This is the next generation of star phone. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here that, you know, D10 is going to blow up as big as Zoom blows up and Zoom is still blowing up. So I see it as, you know, a key component to the next generation of where AV is going to be. All right. Let, let me take a step back first. So yep. for people that are watching this that I'm, that still not may be familiar with who you are, you are a 30 year veteran here. You have a pedigree in this business like no other. You have technical chops. You are disguising yourself as a salesperson right now, but you do have technical chops behind you, right? Yep. With your knowledge, with your experience, what is there in the D10 that is making it special? I mean, aside obviously from yeah, it's low price, uh, it's got a it's it's competitively priced. It's not low price. It's competitively priced, and you there's the relationship obviously with Zoom. What is it bringing to the table that the average technical manager at a uh, corporation should be looking for that D10 has or that other boards have or that D10 kind of does well? Uh, so there, there are probably two main components uh, that are appealing to everybody. Uh, the first one is because our concept was it was an all-in-one and you're just going to hang it on the wall, it's going to work. Uh, we actually have a 16 microphone array within the unit so we can pick up everybody across the board. Uh, and uh, if you go to talk to any one of my D10 guys, uh, they've got a video where they can show uh, somebody talking from 50 feet, 60 feet away and you can hear them clearly. Uh, we actually even have tools so you can adjust the maximum sound distance because you don't always wanna pick up that far, obviously. Um, so audio pickup quality uh, was really important. Uh, we worked a lot with the Zoom guys on a lot of the DSP stuff that's in there. Uh, so that you don't hear anybody when they're typing on their keyboard, for example. We know how to eliminate those kind of sounds uh, because we want the, you know, the user experience to be that good. Uh, the other thing about it is the camera microphone bar or the, the, the top bar, as we call it, uh, and then the actual integrated PC. They're all modular, so they just pop on and pop off. Uh, so from a maintenance point of view, if you need to repair or replace something, you know, if the PC dies, you just pull the PC out and slide a new one in and you're up and running again. If the sound bar dies or the camera dies, you just pop a new board, pop a new bar on the top and away you go. Most of the other all-in-ones, you got to take the whole thing down, send the whole thing back. And we know their screens, they're heavy, they're expensive. Uh, we even work pretty hard on making the screen pretty thin. It's only uh, two inches thick. Uh, yeah. So th those were all our goals. It only weighs 50 pounds. Yeah, the idea was easy in, easy out. Uh, if I worked for an integrator today, I would find a good customer that wanted D10 and I'd probably, I'd have my guys probably slamming six, 10 of them onto the wall every day. You know, I call it a hang because we don't even need to bang anything anymore. Awesome. So we, we, we got the concept, we got the product, we know exactly what we're doing here. Um, my next question regarding the D10 is um, it's not just a 55 inch system anymore. You That's guys correct. Also introduced now the duals. Uh, and you have a 75. Yep. Uh, we have a, how right, we have you? a 75. We have a dual 75 coming. Uh, and then next month is Zoomtopia. And we'll have another set of products at Zoomtopia for everybody to see. It, did you just give us a tease? I just told you we're going to have some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That's technically not a tease. I tried. I tried. All right. All right, so we, we, got the, we, we got the concept. We got uh, what D10 does. Um, tell us about their whiteboarding, right? Some of the issues with whiteboards in the past has either been the touch, it's kind of, eh, or it's too difficult, or it's proprietary. Uh, what, what has D10 done to help the whiteboarding Okay, so yeah, so D10 actually D10 actually started working on the interactive whiteboard side of it. Uh, that's where we came from. Uh, so current D10 product is 10 points of touch. Uh, response time is great. You don't you know you don't have to worry about anything like that. Uh, but the beauty of it is because we're part of this we're part of the Zoom environment. It's all the same tools for Zoom. I can actually write on the bottom of the screen in the same place where I'm picking my colors. Uh, there's a button that says save and I can save it. And when the save thing comes up, it just gives me a list. Uh, it says, who do you want to email to? You can even choose email to everybody that's on the call. 
and it'll just email out automatically. Again, it's really about ease of use, but that's all based, a lot of that's based on the Zoom tools and how well Zoom has done at creating a collaborative space and we're taking advantage of it. Well, absolutely, absolutely. And just a little side note, it'll probably pop up on the lower third that I have uh, streaming below here. Um, you know, when, when Dave is not sitting in his uh, Central Park town, uh, uh, <laughs> right, Central Park over there, there was actually a, a, a landscaper next door uh, mowing the lawn because he is a, he, he is a, a, a remote worker. So there was a landscaper out there mowing and he kept asking me prior to this video, do you hear, do you hear, I don't hear nothing. And if I just apply for two seconds, you just still don't hear it. So Zoom is doing its business, which is great. It's, it's muting that out. I swear I can't hear it. So that's a good thing. So where, what is the future of collaboration uh, for D10? Where is it going to go? I mean, we're talking, you already said, look for what we're doing at Zoomtopia. That's on record. Mm -hmm. What is beyond that? Because most manufacturers are working. What you can give us has that. Um, there, there will certainly be some stuff at Zoomtopia that we're going to show you, uh, but we're constantly looking, we're constantly targeting uh, three or four different areas. We're trying to make things easier for everybody all the time. Uh, we're trying to reduce the cost all the time. We really, we really think it should be, you know, these products should be ubiquitous. They should be everywhere. Uh, and we see it right now, how many people go to the lunchroom and while they're having lunch, they pull out a notebook or they flip open a laptop and they start talking about something or working on something. Why shouldn't there be just a, you know, whatever size it is, 25 inch TV on the end of the table that they can make it a zoom room and start scribbling on. There's, there's no reason why we can build other sizes and find other places for these kind of things. So wow. collaboration is collaboration is just going to be ubiquitous everywhere. We have, we have to develop, products that fit into all those spaces. Awesome. All right. I need you to help me explain to people that are listening to this, a, a, a difference in your, in your own terms. There are a couple different things that is considered Zoom product or Zoom certified. There is PSO standard and there is Zoom certified. Can you give me an example or can you give me your take on what the difference is between the two? Because being Zoom certified and being a PSO standard, such as D10 is, is a difference. And it's a difference. Mm -hmm. What separates one from the other for the people that, for, for the audience that's listening? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so there, are, there are kind of two different qualifications. The first one is, you know, Zoom, like, like anybody else, like everybody else, you don't know every other component that's out there. So you can't build to accept every other component that's out there. You can try, but you can't be sure. So then it becomes the factor of how do I know it's going to work? That's where we get to Zoom certified. Somebody makes a camera, they make a microphone, they make a speaker, they bring it in, they plug it in. Everybody makes sure it works. And then it becomes, if you will, Zoom certified. When you've got an all-in-one solution or you've got a complete package, that really meets the requirements of Zoom and what, what, they, what they think a room should be, that's where you move to a POS level. That's the big differentiator. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, people should be looking for, for PSO certified? Yes. Over just regular Zoom certified. Right. Mm -hmm. and that's, Zoom certified kind of says, yes, it'll work. Good luck. Wow, another mic drop by Dave. All right. <laughs> so. I'm glad you came on the show, but at this point, I got to move to some obscure questions because people got to know. Okay. All right. So first question out the gate here. Do you still read physical newspapers? No. You're completely now digital. <laughs> the only thing I physically read still is the New Yorker. That's it? Everything else I read digital. Even with one of those, kind, I, like you read books on Kindle and stuff like that? Uh, mostly a laptop or phone. Wow. Wow, even I still go back to books, man. I kind of <laughs> like to fold the pages and do my something. Wife, my wife is still all books. Really? Oh, well, yeah. they're, you never have to recharge them. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I can't read them at night in the dark. So I guess that's a, a negative too. So all right. 
out the way. Best, here's one. Give us your best, most useless fact stuck in your head. I'm talking about something that would get you an award at Jeopardy type fact. Whoa. Ah. Useless fact. Mm -hmm. All my facts mean something somewhere. Oh, come on. I got Edgar Allan Poe marrying his 13 year old cousin. Somehow I got stuck in my head when I had to ah, learn. Here's, here's, a, here's a useless fact that I just learned the other day. Go for it. Steve Miller of the Steve Miller Band. Mm -hmm. His godfather is Les Paul. No way. Yeah, useless fact. And that's how he learned to play the guitar. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, you stumped this chump. I. <laughs> well, since you brought up music. And, and the, other, the other one that goes with that is when David Bowie was trying to create Space Odyssey, uh, Rick Wakeman from uh, ultimately what was Yes and whatnot was in the other studio and they just started playing. He played all the keyboards for him. Really? Yeah. Dave, you're a fountain of knowledge when it comes to that. So I'm going to continue with the music. Because you now opened that Pandora's box. Um, are you more a David Lee Roth or Sammy Hagar guy when it comes to Van Halen? Oh, that's a good question. I... If you don't say Diamond Dave, I'm going to shut this interview right off. I was, I was going to say, I'm more of a David Lee Roth guy because Sammy Hagar is Sammy Hagar and he should just be Sammy Hagar. <laughs> so Dave can't drive. 55. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Useless fact is gone. What, if you were to describe yourself as an emoji, what would it be? Oh, this is, this is a great question because several years ago, my niece was, I think, 12 at the time, and she started with those Bitmoji things. Yeah. And she made me create one. And ultimately, I realized I was creating myself. So I am a bumblebee. So if, I, so if I need to refer to Dave Silverstein moving forward in text, I will just put, hey, the bumblebee. Yeah. Would be, that'd be awesome. Okay. What? Okay. <laughs> that this, I, this may be a very open loaded question. What non-AV topic could you do a presentation for, for 20 minutes in front of a group of people? Oh, anybody who knows me, I could talk about anything for 20 minutes. That's easy. Um, but but in all fairness, um, one of my hobbies is cooking, so I could certainly talk for 20 minutes about cooking stuff. Wait a minute. You know, we constantly go into the food conversation here because you've seen a couple of our past episodes. What particular culinary space do you operate in? Um, mo so most of my work is around the grill. It is not the barbecue. It is all, I do all, mostly all high direct heat stuff. Uh, but I will grill anything for you. Lots of seafood. I've done paella on the grill. I do pizzas on the grill. You just opened up an invitation. Thank you. Yeah. You're, you're going to have to drive from the other part of the state. <laughs> exactly. It just for, for the people that don't know, he is actually in New York, not in Central Park, but here is his pizzas on the grill. There you uh, go. Not in Central Park. Now you can leave that up there. And uh, I am in uh, New Jersey. All right, so now we know what's on your grill, but what is in the trunk of your car right now? Absolutely nothing. You don't, there's not even a Never. You know, sports equipment. There's, uh, there's, a, there's a chamois to wipe the windows. That's it? You're That's that it. OCD about what's in the trunk of your car? Yep. I think, oh God, man, I think I have a pair my, of there that I My Jeep's it. got a hundred things in it, but the car's got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> The Jeep's got a tow rope under the back seat and a couple of come alongs. And there's a, you know, there's, there's 18 little straps thrown around. Yes. Yes. The car, nothing. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. What U S state have you yet to visit? Uh, let's see. Alaska. You've never been. Okay. I've never been to Alaska. I only ever changed planes in Hawaii. Really? Yeah, that would, I would think that that would be like a visited state. It, it wasn't really changing planes. We were getting fuel to continue to Australia. Understood. All well, right. actually, we stopped in Guam for fuel again. That was kind of weird. But anyway. <laughs> All right. So it was an odd flight. 
Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, bucket list, you, you've traveled a lot, obviously, uh, through employment and, and, and obviously through uh, your own journeys, but is there a bucket list country who you have yet to visit? Uh, I have not yet been to the continent of Africa. So Africa's on the bu bucket list one way or the other. Awesome. Might be, might be, might just be Morocco, but got to get to Africa somehow. I, ironically, one of my bucket lists is uh, I have, um, I, I have a place over in Portugal that my dad uh, lived at uh, before he passed. So when I go to Portugal to visit family, typically go to the southern part of Portugal. My goal is to do the drive to Gibraltar. Oh. Cross over. So that's like my, at one point, like I want to do that drive across the lower uh, bottom half of Spain to Gibraltar and then somehow get over to Africa, at least by ferry or something. Great. So be kind of cool. Anyway, uh, in the great shortage that is currently happening in the United States, which one is a bigger problem? The shortage of white claw drinks or Popeye chicken sandwiches? Uh, for me, it's neither, but I presume it's probably white claw drinks. Thank you. <laughs> I would go with Popeye's ch chicken sandwich because now they <laughs> offer it as a DIY, do it yourself, bring your own bread. They'll um, give you everything, but they apparently have a shortage of the bread. Oh, white jeez. Claw, white claws, the summer's over. They'll, they, you know, all the people that are drinking white claws, hard seltzers on the beach. Right, right. That's going to start fading away. Pretty soon they're going to be looking for some sort of like warm alcoholic drinks or something when they go back home it was you know it's the the new yorkers that come to the jersey shore was killing them yeah and uh, I'm, I'm just thinking if popeyes is out somebody's gonna go to chick-fil-a and that'll be that see that's another whole other battle you don't and please don't mention wendy's on the, the <laughs> yeah wendy's. they're in the they're all in the game aren't they oh but uh, oh no doubt the social media person for wendy's they are known for being savages online if you somehow even tweet at them kind of snarky, they will come right back at you with something. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 wow. they're I, yeah, I love it. Love it. All right. Favorite movie. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Wow. There, there are, there are so many. I didn't even ask if you've been to the movies lately. I just asked what <laughs> I, I seem to have been, I, I've seen oh. some people with the, have you been to the movies lately? Most people in our industry are like, no. Yeah, right. I haven't been to the movies in a while. Um, you know, for some reason, I'm always drawn back to Cool Hand Luke. Cool Hand Luke. Classic. But for a bunch of people, especially my sales guys and all the sales guys out there, if you've never seen the movie, Thank You for Smoking, you should watch it. Okay. That's a great recommendation. And I think I have seen it somehow. I go through movies like crazy. Uh, <laughs> just my memory's kind of shot. Uh, unfortunately for me, I ha if it's not Empire Strikes Back, if that doesn't right. that doesn't flow off my tongue, I might, I, you know, I, I may be doing a disservice to myself. I, I think the I think the last movie I saw in the theater was uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Did you enjoy it? Yes, yeah, it's it was great. It, it was it was it was very well done. Uh, Remy really Nye well done. Great job. I mean, he yep. really, he really embodied um, Freddie Mercury. I right. sure did. Last question here. If you can, um, if you can instantly become an expert in any one thing, just by doing that, what would it be? What is the one thing that if you could become an expert on, boom, download like matrix, they plug you in, boom, you've just learned Kung Fu. Wow. What would that be? We're gonna to have to put like a jazz. Mm. That's a that's a tough <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> well, okay. What at what at work? For yeah. let me break it down. Let's get let's make it down to a work thing. What could you get better at in your career? That is kind of like for me personally. I don't understand numbers. Numbers are very hard for me uh, to understand. Like how how things add up. I wish I was just better at at, at so, 
in numbers, being more analytical as opposed to theoretical? So I, I, guess, I guess the answer is, um, if I had much more depth of knowledge of, I'll say the law and lawyering, it would certainly be beneficial for me. The, the legal side. The legal side of it. Yeah, that's interesting. You're right, because there's, once you start going off into the trademark patent world, that's a whole other right a bizarro place too and what you can and can't say in certain situations well, in, in, interestingly enough i i learned many many years ago that a lawyer's job is to tell you what your exposure will be if you do something wrong not to tell you you can or can't do it hmm. okay and a lot, of, a lot of us in business, a lot of us operate of, oh, the lawyer said you can't do that. No, the lawyer said, if you do that, you're going to be fined, you're going to be sued, you're going to go to jail. They didn't say you couldn't. Better to ask forgiveness than permission. Yeah, or, or just know what your, the idea is, you know, what are the chances? That's, the lawyers will never tell you that. That's your part to decide. Awesome. So to wrap this up, what bit of advice do you have for the sub five year AV person in the industry? What kind of advice? I mean, you, like I said, I started off by saying you've been in this industry for almost 30 years. You, 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 you've kind of, you know, played by your own rules and, and done your own thing. So what kind of advice would you give to a, you know, somebody who's been in the industry, maybe, you know, toiling at it for about five years and wondering what the next step should be or where they should point their, their focus. So I would certainly say, you know, like, kind of like what I said before, the AV industry isn't going anywhere. There's still a need for us. The, the need is actually getting greater. If you look at the number of outdoor video walls these days, digital signage, all these kind of other places where video is now becoming ubiquitous. Uh, there's certainly room for all of us. And I think we need to be moving that direction as opposed to saying, hey, I only do this one little niche thing and stay in this one little pocket. Yeah. So diversify yourself, diversify your career portfolio would be a good thing. Yep. All right. it's, uh, yeah. it's, no, it's no difference. You know, everybody said the broadcast industry died 10 years ago and somehow they're still alive and going strong. Hey, if the if MTV can have the Video Music Awards and they haven't played a video music video in the last ten years, who knows? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Rebels in Flux. That person on the other side there, that's Mr. Dave Silverstein. Thank you so much for stopping by, Dave. Where can we find out more information about you and D10? Uh, so of course you can find D10 at. Uh... Uh, d10.com. That's the place for us. Uh, you can get me. It's david.silberstein at d10.com. Or if you want to use any of those social media places, uh, I'm on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, all those kind of things. And my Twitter handle is d10dave. Sounds great. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Uh, my name's Chris Neto. I am the host of this uh, wacky show. This is Rebels in Flux. We are out every Thursday. You find a new episode out on Synergy Center. That is the sponsor. If you go right below here, Synergy Center is the web address. Saren.biz is the sponsor, and that's their uh, website. Or I work for Saren, so that's our website. Saren.biz is the uh, website where you can find Saren. You can find Saren on Twitter at Saren underscore MKG and on Instagram at the same uh, handle. Again, my name is Chris Neto. You can find me at Chris underscore Neto on Twitter. Thank you so much, Dave, for joining us. And thank, thank you, you. So much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to Rebels in Flux.